In today's video, I pit an 8-ish year old gaming pre-built I knife battled off Craigslist against modern games. But first, today's video is sponsored by Be Quiet's new Pure Wing 3 fans. If you have a hankering for some big boy fans chasing them cooling gains, but you don't want to take out a mortgage on your house, the Pure Wing 3s are for you. They even come in a high speed spec for those of you trying to cool an elephant's foot or whatever. So if you're looking for high performance fans without the high cost, check out the Be Quiet Pure Wing 3s using the link in the video description. Thank you Be Quiet for sponsoring today's video. So this is what happens when Lenovo's engineers do gamer drugs. This is the Lenovo Idea Center, which <laughs> I think it's funny that they still use the Idea Center naming culture for something that looks like a Mandalorian helmet. Now this one's quite used, as you can tell. It's from the Intel quad-core Dark Ages, and it's supposed to have an i7-6700 in it, but from the outside, it looks like this one's been modified by the previous owner, so I'm not sure it still has that CPU in it. On the front is the armored core face bit with what looks like actual ventilation off to the sides of it. And then we even get some carbon fiber effect with... Does that light up? No, it actually just looks like some, some aero veins we've got down here. There's heavy ventilation off to both sides, which is good to see. And there's even more on top underneath this handle. Now, I think that the graphics card lives here, so this is where it should pull in air. And then we've got our worn down power button over here, but generally, it's like soft touch plastics, which are holding up quite well considering the age of this thing. Next to that, a reasonable front IO with USB 3 and a supercharge port. Around the back, there's some interesting layout things going on. The graphics card is lying face up, so it pulls in air through the top. The motherboard looks A, like it's the original one, and B, has usable IO, even if not spectacular. And next to that, peeking through the bit of ventilation is the not terrible looking CPU cooler. And finally on the back, the power supply is almost definitely user upgraded to this Corsair small form factor unit, which means standard sizes. Although I think it is not captive. Ooh, that's exciting. That's like a Founders Edition card. Really exciting. This is a Founders Edition 10 series card, which makes this a big day for me. I've always wanted to see one of these beasts in the wild. Going by what's going on here, I'm gonna guess it's a 1070, but we'll find out when we turn the system on. We've got a bit of a whoopsie, the power connector, that little side bit isn't fully plugged in but I'm pretty sure the power supply was user replaced. So luckily Lenovo is not gonna have to get the firing squad ready for whoever built this system. And then underneath all of that, we've got our Lenovo red motherboard over there with two sticks of RAM and a cooler that's got a little bit of a cod piece going. The actual heatsink only extends to about here. This is just a shroud to kind of like direct air out the back. And we've got some storage in the front here, which looks like it's been user upgraded. That is a Samsung 870 and a fan in the front. And then around the back, there isn't a whole lot going on. We've just got our aftermarket power supply and that's about it. But with that brief overview, let's see how this almost eight year old system, which is like 5,000 years in PC age holds up at the hand of today's gaming. I gotta say, for a system that's meant to be small, it's very much not. <laughs> it's so big. Oh, that lights up. I'm not gonna lie, it looks pretty cool. And then, because we knife battled it off Craigslist, we've just got a clean Windows 10 install on here. We don't even have graphics drivers, so they just installed Windows and then didn't touch it again. Which is good, we like that. Then we can install all our own VD on it. So CPU wise, yes, here is our 6700. So it's not a K variant. So we're not gonna be able to overclock it, but we do have our four cores and eight threads. 
we've got 16 gigs of RAM running at 2133 megahertz. Oh no. It's got a one terabyte SSD in it and a three terabyte hudder. And once the drivers were installed, I also confirmed we do in fact have a GTX 1070 in here with its eight gigs of video memory. Ooh, the BIOS is a useless example of patheticness. We're not gonna be able to do anything about the RAM speed directly in here, but a JEDC kit may give us a bit more RAM speed later down the line. Okay, gaming. Now for some quick context, to see how this system runs games more or less from its heyday, we've got GTA 5 at 1080p high settings, and it's running pretty well. We're not getting huge amounts of frame rates, like this kind of settings we usually see well into 190 frames per second with all of the stuttering and stuff happening, which isn't happening here, but if anything, it leads to a much better gaming experience. It feels very smooth and responsive and yeah, this feels good. And we'd probably get way more performance if we fixed whatever is causing the weird utilization going on here. My bet's on the RAM speed. At 1080p high settings, Battlefield 5 is putting so much more load on the system than GTA 5 was, and it seems like the, uh, the GTX 1070 and the 6700 are a match made in heaven. Look at that, very, very similar uh, usage there. And with the higher utilization comes quite a bit higher power draw and temperatures, especially on the graphics card. Now Battlefield 5 is getting quite long in the tooth at this point, so let's get to the newer games. Oh, he's, he doesn't know what's happening. Oh, right in the face. <laughs> okay, now let's see us go to, at 1080p low settings, we're getting about 130 frames per second. And it, you know, it feels good. It feels like gaming is happening. It's very playable. Uh, you can see we don't have any like large fluctuations in frame time going on. Yeah, this is, this is a very playable result. But, oh, oh, there we go. Uh, but luckily, with CSGO 2, we have a secret weapon that despite this not being an RTX GPU, we can use. Yes, Fidelity FX Super Resolution. We're gonna get quality so that we don't lose too much visual fidelity. Let's see what that does. Very little. That's interesting. I do think we're running into some slight memory bandwidth issues here. because. Uh, we don't have full utilization on either the CPU or the GPU. Ooh, again, the Founders Edition card. Not super happy, temperature-wise, in this case. Cyberpunk running at medium settings and 1080p, I mean, 50-ish frames per second. That is, that is not terrible. It feels pretty good. There is quite a lot of motion blur on, though. Let me turn that off. This is with the game natively running at 1080p and uh, they have been updating the Fidelity FX implementation quite a lot on here. So again, <laughs> we're quite hilariously not going to be able to use DLSS despite this being an NVIDIA card. We have to use Fidelity FX. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, that just tells you so much, doesn't it? Um, okay, so let's start off with quality and see how much that helps. Yeah, I, I'd say that may have helped slightly. Uh, it's not a huge difference, but it, it feels a teeny bit smoother. And in the canned benchmark, there was a decent jump in performance, so it helps more in like interior environments and stuff. But let's go up the increments here and see at what point the CPU becomes a problem. So let's go to performance, Fidelity FX. Whoa, that's made a very big difference. So now we've actually run into a little bit of a CPU bottleneck here and I mean, it still looks fine. It's a little soft when there's like movement happening, but it feels really good. Like this is, this is smooth. Compared to the early days, Fidelity FX is getting wildly good. I'm kind of assuming by what's going on there with the utilizations that we're not gonna get more performance going to like ultra. Yeah, see, we're losing quality quite a lot, but we're not really getting any more performance. So now it's down to the CPU being a problem, um, and it's capable of about 70 to 80 frames per second. 
I then very excitedly tried the new dynamic resolution scaling option, which lets you set a bunch of the parameters around how the scaling operates, but I couldn't get any better visuals with similar performance to any of the presets that were already there. At which point I decided to drop a JEDEC RAM kit in here to try and get more performance before we try some more current games. For RAM, I'm using the trusty Patriot JDAC kit that they sent over a while ago, because hopefully this will give us quite a bump in RAM speeds in the system. So this is a 2400 megahertz kit, which I don't know if that looks like something Lenovo would use, but it's just pretty generic ass looking RAM. Oh, um, what? It turns out, between the 6700 and the motherboard in this Lenovo system, the max supported RAM speed is 2133 MHz. Which is pretty outrageous, but there's not a whole lot you can do about it. So, let's try some more games. Oh, Resident Evil 4 doesn't mess about. This is with quite low settings. But because of how dark it is, you can't really tell. And it's... lots of frames are happening here. This kind of makes the, the kind of MacBook Pro gaming demonstration of this game quite a lot less impressive, <laughs> considering that, yeah, this is very much crushing it. Starfield, we're doing 1080p medium. I don't know if anybody's still playing this game, but I, <laughs> I, am, I am curious to see how it holds up on older hardware. Not very well, clearly. 1070, ooh. Wow, that was a big lag spike, my word. I then tried some real aggressive FSR settings, which didn't help as much as I was expecting, but dropping all the settings down to low with 50% FSR resolution scaling did. So with all the settings at low, using 50% render scale with FSR, this is a playable result. Even with space battling, these settings are holding up pretty well, and it's not like Starfield looks great on the best of days, so you're not really losing out that much, are you? Now considering when The Last of Us first came out, it was a bit of a widowmaker. This 1080p medium performance is much better than I was expecting from the 1070, but despite the reasonable frame rate, there's still quite a heft to the inputs, which isn't great. Luckily, AMD will save us. Uh, I don't think quality is quite enough to eliminate it. It feels better, for sure, but I think we need to drop it a little more, maybe balanced. I love how they all say that it's similar to native. Okay, so with balanced, it doesn't feel like we're drowning in maple syrup anymore, and visually, it still looks pretty good. Even with a visual safari game like this, that previous like native rendering uh, like input latency is way too much. This feels a lot better. It does stutter a bit when there's like big changes in scenery, but this is a big improvement. And again, thanks to AMD, we can use our old NVIDIA graphics card to play some Last of Us. The final thing I did was repaste the majestic stock GTX 1070 to try and improve the temperatures. Now, on a side note, I think this may be the best looking stock card ever. I don't know, let me know in the comment section down below. But anyway, tearing the card down was a huge pain in the butt because it's got like a million screws, a bunch of which screw into the back of other screws holding the thing together. And once I finished tearing it down, the thermal paste was real dry, but finally repasting it after all these years didn't make much of a difference. And with that, what did we learn in today's video? Well, clearly AMD does more to make old NVIDIA graphics cards usable than NVIDIA does, which is really not surprising and brings me to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next video, bye-bye.